This is the ESP8266. It is a little Wi-Fi module you can pick up. And they're around $3 at the moment. Well, I guess that's pound eighty, something like that. Uh, you can pick them up from eBay. They're pretty easy to get hold of. Uh, and they're very, very popular at the moment. Uh, they communicate over serial, so if you're using a microcontroller you can send commands to it and receive information over serial. I'm using software serial with mine, but you can use hardware serial as well. Depending on your firmware on the, uh, on the board, then you'll uh, have to set a different board rate for each one. But uh, mine's currently set to 9600. So this is the setup I've currently got. So they need to be powered by 3.3 volts. Um, the pins on them, I've heard, are 5 volt tolerant. So I'm not doing any level shifting on the, uh, the RX and the TX line. Um, but I am powering it from a little 3.3 volt regulator coming straight from my 5 volt pin on the Arduino. Now the 3 volt, 3 volt, 3, 3 volt, 3, 3.3 volt pin on the Arduino can't really supply enough current. But the 5 volt pin can. So that's why I'm using that with a regulator. I'm also using a small OLED display so that I can see some of the sort of debug information that I'm looking at. So let's turn it on and we'll see what it looks like. So we've got it started up here. You'll just notice that it says loops zero at the, at the start there. Uh, and then it says failed. So whatever it's doing in the first setup routine has failed. And now we've gone to reset. So there are certain functions in here which means that it will go through certain loops. So next it will be asking it to change the Wi-Fi mode. Uh, and it says Wi-Fi mode is three. So that function's then complete. Uh, it'll then try and connect to a network. So there we go. It's connected to my home network. And it's already got the, the time and date that's appeared at the bottom there. So it has worked out. Uh, I'll show you the code for it now. It's kind of simple. I had a lot of problems with this to start with. It was failing around 70% uh, of the time that it tried to make a request from the server. So I've improved that slightly by meaning that it doesn't go through the whole loop each time that it wants to make a request. It'll only go through a few functions. So it will reset the board every time and then it will check to see whether it's connected to the, the network. If it's connected, it will display the network there. So Wi-Fi is, and then it shows you the network. And then if that's successful, it will then go on to the next part and request the web page. If it gets the appropriate response, it will then send the information to the website and then collect the information back. If it doesn't go through those certain processes, it will start again. So it will restart from the beginning which means that you don't waste time doing performing actions that you don't need to do. So this is the code for the ESP8266. I'm using a display with mine, so that's why I've included the UHG library here. You don't need to do that if you don't have a display to use, um, but you do need to include software serial. Um, so we've got our objects here. We've got the display and we've also got software serial starting here on pins 10 and 11. We've got some global variables, one of which is network and one's password. Now this is your router identifier and we've also got password, which is the password for your router. We've got a Boolean, which I'm currently not using, and we've got a Wi-Fi status variable here. Now that one's really important. It's integral to the, how this code works. Uh, we've got a few temporary variables that I'm using to keep track of how many loops there are and also what the debug messages are. In the setup, we've got our two serial lines. So we've got the one going to the computer and we've got the one going to the ESP8266. We've got a large delay at the start of our code here, and that's to let the, the ESP8266 sort of kick out its uh, starting message across serial. And we want to sort of ignore that. So we'll give it some time to get started. In our loop, we've got this section here, which is for the display. So you can ignore that. And then we've got one function to run everything. One function to rule them all, I guess. It's the run ESP8266 function. Now this just takes the website that we want to contact and the page that we want to get from that website. Now, we already have the information up here for the network and password, so that comes into play later on. So here's our display function we can ignore. And then we have our ESP8266 run function. That takes in the variables for the website and the page now, inside this is a switch statement and statement, and this controls sort of the flow of the program. So we have uh, our Wi-Fi status 
uh, code here, code our Wi-Fi status variable here, uh, and that can be one, two, three, four, five, six, or zero. If it's zero, it will reset the module. Uh, just a software reset. It might be better to have a hardware reset, really. Uh, if it's if the number is one, it will change the Wi-Fi mode. Um, it also checks whether the Wi-Fi mode is currently three, so whether it's uh, uh, able to connect out to the internet and also be connected to. So that's Wi-Fi three. It gives it both different modes. Um, if it is two, if the Wi-Fi status is two, then it will check for the Wi-Fi status connection. So see if it's already connected to the router, because this could be going through loops and loops and loops. If I don't want it to try and connect to the router every time, because as long as it's connected once, it's fine. So if it is connected, it will jump to number four here and it will go and get the page. If it isn't, it will connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, once it's got the page, it will then unlink. So I'll show you the, a couple of the functions and then you'll be able to get an idea of how this is working. So the ESP826 reset function, it sends a command across the serial line. So it sends AT plus RST across our software serial has a, a delay of five seconds there. Now, this is important because the the module itself is running its own code and it's also doing handshake stuff with my router um, to do the TCP stuff. Um, so it's important just to give it a bit of time occasionally. Um, so once the serial buffer's been filled up with its information, we can look for the OK message. If it finds OK, then we know that it's reset and then we can change the Wi-Fi status to one, meaning that it goes on to the next function in the, uh, the switch statement, and that's change Wi-Fi mode. Again, there's various bits here. We're just checking what the mode is um, and then kicking out a different Wi-Fi status de depending on whether it's been successful or not. So if it is successful, we move on. We move to checking on the Wi-Fi network status to see if it's already connected to the Wi-Fi. If it is, then we go ahead to get the page. If it isn't, we'll look for connecting to the Wi-Fi. So we've got this connect to Wi-Fi function. If it's able to connect, we move on to getting the page. If it's not, then we'll start the process over again. So getting the page um, is a bit of a complicated one, really. We've got this AT plus CIP start. Now, essentially what we need to do is we need to create a connection um, on port 80 to the web page that we want to connect to. And then we, once that connection is established, we can then send it a command to request a certain page. So we do that there, and then once that's happened, we'll allow the buffer to fill up again, and then we'll look for the um, return that we expect. Now, my PHP page that I'm using kicks out a star character, and that shows me the start of the information that I want to return to the module. Um, so I'll look for that star in the, in the return, and then we'll split it up based on some other unique characters that I've used, ones that I don't normally expect to be in the return. So we've got an at symbol there and a straight line symbol. I don't know what that one's called actually. Um, but then it will use a function at the bottom called split to val and it will use those as delimiters in the end character uh, based on the input string. Um, and so that's how I'm getting information out. I'm splitting up my variables. Then after that we go down to link page. So if it was successful it goes to Wi-Fi status 5 and then we unlink from that page. And then the process starts over again. So hopefully this has been a useful piece of code for you. It's in the description of the video. If you find that you should make any amendments to it, please let me know, because I'd love to know what you're improving. Um, if you find any mistakes, definitely let me know. I'd really appreciate that. But I found it useful to have all these separate functions so I understand what's going on with the ESP8266. It's hard to know what's going on when you're using a library um, it's hard to the sort of nuances of what you're doing. Things take longer if you're requesting larger pages, so you might want to play around with the certain delays in this code. So it's a good place to start. It just means that you're able to learn how this module works, especially over serial. So let me know what your experiences are with ESP8266 and if this code was any use at all.